Welcome back. Wetting the bed or having an accident at school is an issue thousands of Kiwi kids face every day. Here with tips on how to reduce the stress of wetting are paediatrician Dr Bobby Sang and Jacqueline Brown. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Dr Sang, if I can start with you, how common are incontinence problems in children? It's very common. I think people underestimate that. I just want to thank you for you know, having us on the show because you know, we've asked people if they wanted to come here and obviously nobody wants to come because it's so embarrassing. Mm. But because of that secret, it underestimates how many people are involved. Like every class would have about five kids with bedwetting and one or two kids that have got daytime incontinence problems. And we know that it's really stressful for kids. Mm. Their psychologists have found that you know, the, the three things they find most stressful are losing a parent is number one, going blind is number two, and the third one, they say, is wetting their pants in class. So it's huge for kids. And, it, you know, if you think about one, you know, one or two in every class even, that's a huge number of kids. In that's all of crazy. Yeah. Losing yeah. a parent, going yeah. blind, yeah. or wet, wetting yeah. your... So that's how traumatic it yeah. is. What sort of ages are you talking about here when you say five in every class, up to what? Yep. Well, what happens is that when you're talking about new entrants, you can, you, there'll be more than five. And by the time, you know, they're age 10 or so, it's down to around about three a class. But it's, it, that's bedwetting. Mm. But you're still talking about 1% of adults having uh, bedwetting problems. And there'll also be, you know, one every, you know, two or three hundred that have got daytime problems that have mm. come with them from childhood. So, pretty common. Jackie, yes. you've written books to help kids get through this. That's I have, yes. Um, I've written two. One's uh, A Wee Secret on bedwetting, and the other one, Poo Hoo, which is sort of self explanatory. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and the idea behind those really was that um, in New Zealand we didn't particularly have any New Zealand resources and some of the other books from overseas were quite complex in the, the concepts um, so we just wanted to make it really simple um, and, and something that parents and children could read through together and, and um, work on together. Yeah. Doctor, is this psychological or is there actually a, a physical you know, inability? It's definitely a physical thing. The psychological things come second to the toileting problems. We've, now, with functional MRI, that means with scans where they can see what's happening at the time, what they have shown is that there's actually a control centre in the front part of your brain, in the frontal lobe, that controls the back part and also right down into the spine and into your bladder and stuff. And when that's not working properly, it means that the sensation's delayed and the coordination in terms of involuntarily relaxing your bladder and stuff like that doesn't work properly. So the result is that kids end up voluntarily, uh, voluntarily trying to keep their sphincters closed and then it gets into bad habits. Because what happens is that you close your sphincter, you have to rush to the toilet. When you get to the toilet, you can't relax properly mm. and you get residual urine in your bladder, you know, a little bit left over. And then when you go back to the desk and relax, that's when you get wet. Mm. And so it's becoming pretty clear that it's actually a dysfunctional elimination How do problem. you treat it then? How do you, you know? Well, it's really um, explaining that to the kids so that they know that they have to do what's called routine timed voiding, to go before they feel the urge, when you don't have that sort of bad uh, process going on. You go there when you're relaxed, everything's not tense, and you're able to sort of pass urine normally. And then if you do that regularly during the day and for long enough, the habit gets through and you don't get that sort of um, mm. bad process and you Jacqueline, get do you have any other advice for parents whose children might be you know having problems with yeah, wetting their pants? Well I think as Bobby's just explained um, the biggest piece of advice for parents is really often um, parents think that it's something that the children can control and it's a huge relief to everybody in the family especially to the child um, when everybody is actually realizes that they don't have control over it it's not something they're doing deliberately um, and it's it's you know an actual physical problem that needs to be worked on to achieve success so that's that's the key really mm. do you think kids find it so traumatic because it's almost part of, of growing up isn't it you know it's a bit babyish to do that kind of thing well it's and then... a very un, you know it's, a, it's it's not a socially acceptable thing to, to mm. do is it? and to sit in the the middle of your classroom with wet pants or, or smelly pants mm. is, is 
you know, attracts attention. Um, so it's socially unacceptable and it limits their um, ability to go on overnight at friends' houses or um, you can imagine the horror of going on a school camp and worrying that, you know, at some point you're going to wet the bed or, or have some other kind of accident. So it does bring in quite a lot of stress for, for children, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about pelvic floor muscles as well? Is that uh, some, an area that um, weakness there also in increases the problem? It's not really a... A problem with kids so much. We talk about pelvic floor exercises for um, stress incontinence and that can be useful if there's a problem with like the spine or um, if they've had surgery and stuff like that but it's not usually an issue with kids and the dysfunctional elimination syndrome. Yeah. Well thank you both very much. Thank yes, you. Wonderful, thank you very much. And you can find more information about the New Zealand continents Association's National Awareness Week on our website. Coming up after the break, we spray on the mask for international fragrance guru Danny Ventura.